quick video on conduit fittings and the electrical jargon and terminology we use in the field. First thing to be aware of, there are two general types of conduit, flexible conduit and rigid conduit. Conduit is available in many different sizes. Most commonly used will be 20mm and 25mm conduit. To work with conduit, you will need a set of conduit cutters. These simply cut any types of conduits nice and straight. You can also use a hacksaw, but these are far superior and quicker. Then to join conduit, we use conduit glue or cement, and this welds the conduit fittings together. Remember that when using conduit glue, this will literally melt the conduit together with the other part that you glue it to and you'll never be able to remove it. If you stuff it up, you may be able to cut it back a wee bit. And then you can potentially use this end to connect something onto in the future if you needed to. To fix conduits to walls or ceilings, we generally use saddles or conduit clips. These conduit clips give a much tidier result, but they do take a lot longer to install. And they also clip together, so you can slide them together and make it look tidy if you've got multiple runs of conduits. Generally, we use these internally for industrial or commercial applications. The more hardy, zinc plated or stainless steel saddles are used outdoors this saddle here is referred to as a full saddle and these ones here are half saddles they come in a range of sizes basically half saddle just fixes the conduit on one side and the full saddle you'll fix it to either side of the conduit if you decide not to use flexible conduit and you need to go around a corner you will need to use a bend or bend the rigid conduit itself. Bending the rigid conduit itself requires a bending spring and a heat gun or very carefully using a gas torch. The spring goes inside, you heat it up and you can manipulate it to different bends and different angles and it will still keep its shape providing you've got the right sized bending spring for the right sized conduit. The process of using heat and a bending spring to manipulate rigid conduit is time consuming and it may be more practical to jump from co rigid conduit to flexible conduit or use an elbow or a bend. Some of the bends you can use with different sizes of conduit are 90 degree elbows or long sweep bends. The orange conduits here are used for underground mains cables Generally use these for new foundations. So cable penetrations is next. We have a cable coming out of the wall and need to nicely fit the conduit onto it. Generally we use through boxes. This is a one way through box or conduit J box. They do come in square as well as circular ones. So the through box here generally cut a hole in it and the cable comes out of the wall into the through box. You can join it in there and it can drop down into the conduit. Here is a two-way through box. This you can drill a hole in, have the cable penetrating through the wall into here. You can do some joins, and then it can split out either way from the conduit. Another different type of penetration is a cobra clamp. Now these clamps you can get again in different sizes, and they clip nicely around the conduit. This here is called a three-way T-piece, or three-way inspection box. These boxes can go up to four different ways, so you can have four different conduits coming out 90 degrees from each other. For joining different size conduits, there are reducers. This one here is a 25 to 20 mil reducer. We can cement that in there. And onto the 20, and it will perfectly step it down for you. For conduit penetrations and switchboards and control boxes, we have plain screw adapters and also some corrugated screw adapters. So these ones with the cutout and the clips on them are purpose built for these corrugated or flexible conduits to clip into. And then these plain screw adapters are built to go on the end of rigid conduits. 
What happens is you cut 25 mil in the side of a switchboard or box, chuck this, chuck this end through, and then screw the other end on the inside of the box, and that will secure it nicely to the box. The nut end on the screw adapters is called a lock nut. Other fittings include a screw to screw adapter. Now this one is a reducer, so it steps down from 32 to 25 mil. You can screw your 25 mil on one side of that and then screw a 32 mil fitting onto the other side of it. Another common fitting is a joiner. Now they, this one here is rigid to rigid, so you just glue that on to one of the 25 mil ends and the other end's gonna be 25 mil again. If you wanted rigid to flexi, you would then have to get the rigid to flexi adapter on the other end. This fitting here is what we call a bush. It goes in to the top of a metal or other switchboard that requires a grommet and the cables then can go straight through it without getting damaged by the surface structure of the board they're going through. These bushes aren't generally used with conduit because with conduit fittings, they act as a bush anyway when you've got the plain screw adapter through the board. Last fittings I'm gonna talk about are glands. Now these are nylon glands. This one here is an NG16, so it's a nylon gland, 16 mil, and this one here is an NG20 and it's a nylon gland 20 mil. These glands are used for flexible cable penetrations into conduit or other fittings. So you can have the cable going straight through and out the other end and into a motor, hot water cylinder or other appliance that you need it for. The last fitting here are grommets. These basically protect cables when they penetrate into a met metallic fitting or a metallic switchboard. So you don't want rigid metal cutting into the cable. Now one type of fitting you can use as opposed to a bush or a plain screw adapter. There are other alternatives on the market for sleeving around jagged parts of steel when you're running cables through them. But these are your general most commonly used items.